Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, we are going to create a cool little expandable card in React and Framer Motion. So here's what we have. Just the card type. Again, this can be anything like a small little card that's a blog post that expands up just like that with the blog content, of course. Nothing else, nothing less. Okay, so it's quite simple. So I do want to show you how to do it because I feel like it's quite a... Uh, quite a popular thing to do. It's quite in, in vogue now, as I've heard, right? It's quite popular. Ex ex expandable stuff. Okay, so what we need to do, I just have an empty project here, just create React app, MPX create React app, that's how you create it. And we're, we're all gonna do it in this app component, just because it's that simple. So generate this and one other thing that we need to install is Framer Motion. So do an npm install Framer dash motion like that. Okay. And then it's done. And then we can run npm start to see what we have up and going. Let's see. And I feel like it's going to error out. It did. Yes. It says logo is not defined. So where is that thing here? So it doesn't really matter because we're going to clean everything up in this app component like that. Okay, so let's go up here at the top and it's just one thing that we really need to import from Framer Motion, which is motion like that in curly brackets from Framer Motion. So basically what you do with this motion component is you start off your HTML tags with you basically pre append the motion dot and then whatever the HTML element you want. So motion.div, motion.h2. And that is going to give you some superpowers to do animations. Okay. And another thing I'm going to import here is uState. And this will just be used to do a simple toggle on and off on the card. Okay. So let's add that as well. Cool. So what we're going to do first of all is... We're gonna make a card here, but again, I'm gonna call it a motion dot div like that. Okay. And I'm also gonna give this a class name of card so we can style it up a little bit. Okay, cool. So that's one thing we need. Another thing that we need in here is gonna be the title. So if we check here, all right, the title here and then the rest of the content. So in the card, I'm going to add a motion H2. So we'll just make everything motion like that. And this is going to say, uh, what is it? Framer motion rocket. I think I had it copied over. No, I, I did not. Uh, okay, let's just write it out. Framer motion. I don't know how to pull up the rocket emoji on this keyboard. I know it's Windows space, but it, it just doesn't work on this one. Okay, so there we go. We have that. And finally, what we need to do is add the content. All right, so for that, I'm just going to make another div in here and call it motion div. Like that. And then here, I'm just going to drop in two paragraphs, okay? So I'm just going to do normal paragraphs because we're not going to do any animations on these. So I'm going to do lorem 20 to generate. Come on, do it. It's not doing it. Lorem 20? Is it because it's not switched to React? That might be the one. Here we go. Let's try it again. There we go. Hit save. So that's one. And then we'll do a shorter one down here, lorem 10 and tap. Okay, cool. So this is what we have right now. Not too nice. Uh, so let's add some styling. I'm going to just do it all in index.css. Okay, so let's head over there. I'm going to add a, I'm going to remove all the margins and paddings. So we're going to do that with margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing border box. Next up, I'm going to grab the app. And let's also grab the body actually. And I'm going to just add a nice linear gradient to this. So linear gradient, I'm going to do two right. And the colors are, 
and just do these two for the sake of simplicity, 2C5364. And the other one is 203A43, like that. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty cool. Okay, then in the app, I'm just gonna add a little height to it, just so I can center the card in the middle. Now, in your case, you might wanna have multiple cards, uh, then you'd probably not do this. But I'm just going to do this for the sake of adding display flex. And so I can add the align item center, justify content center. Now I'm going to grab the card. Obviously, it's going to have a white background to it, like that, and some padding to it. Padding, 3 rem, 5 rem. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And just the final thing I'm going to do down here is grab the card B and just add a little bit of padding to it. So padding, let's do padding top of one rem. I'm going to add a, I'm going to keep it like this because I want to show you something. And I'm going to change the line height to 150% like that. All right, cool. And then we can do a font family if you wanted to. So let's do HTML font family. Let's just do sans error for now. There we go. That's pretty cool. All right. So next up, what I want to do is basically hide the content. All right. That's going to be step number one. And then we'll figure out the animation for uh, the animation after we want to do the functionality first. So for that, all we really need to do is do a toggle with the use state. So I'm going to go here at the top. I'm just going to create a little variable for us. I'm going to call it is open. And the second one is going to be set is open. And this is going to be set to a Boolean. All right. So initially it's going to be false. So it's going to be closed. And when we click on it, we want to switch it to true, which means that the card expands. I'm doing hand movements in real life, but you cannot see that. I just thought it was quite silly. Okay. So basically, when do I want to open this card? Well, when I click on the card. So let's go on the card. I can add an on click to this and what I can do is do an arrow function and do set is open to the opposite of is open, right? So basically this checks, hey, if it's false, then it toggles it to true. If it's true, then it does the opposite of it. All right, click, click. Well, nothing happens, but what we can do to kind of demonstrate that this works is we can basically take this div, right? That we want to animate in and out, or I should say the content and just add a curly bracket here and say is open. So if this is true, then I want to render out this div. So I can do is open and and, and then just take this last curly bracket and wrap this div around it like that. All right, so now, as you can see, it's closed, but when I click, it opens it up like that. Very cool. Oh, I have a big sneeze coming. I'm not sure when it's coming out. Just be warned, because it's going to be spooky. Why are you laughing over there? <laughs> okay. All right. So that's all sorted, all nice and good. So how can we start this animation process? Um, well, what we need to do, it's quite simple. You just go over to the card and add a layout to it. And that's basically going to detect any changes in the layout. And it's going to try to animate those properties, whether it would be the I'm doing the hand thing again, stop making fun of me, uh, whether it be the position of it or the size of it. And the same applies to uh, the, the children of the element. So the H2 as well. So if I add a layout to it, it's going to try to animate the position of it whilst the card changes its height and size. So let me show you, let me demonstrate it. So all you need to do is just add a layout. Okay, look at that. Okay, so it does animate. Now we do have problems. So the card itself, since it has the layout on it, it does animate really nicely. The problem is, as you can see, the, the H2 and the text get stretched out and moved in weird ways. So what you need to do is also add a layout to this to let it know, hey, also animate the position of this rather than doing this weird stretchy uh, scaling issue. So whenever you have the scaling issue, make sure you add layout to the children as well. So in this case, what I want to do is go over to the H2 and add a layout to it. Now, if I hit save, as you can see, it still doesn't really work that nicely because layout by default 
uh, animates the size of it but all, and also the position of it. So what we want to tell frame or motion is just to animate the position of it, move it from here all the way in that position and leave the scaling alone. So all you have to do is set this equal to and do position like that and hit save. So take a look at that. Now, I think it needs a refresh or something. I'm, I'm not sure why it's acting up. There we go, just a refresh. As you can see now, it only does the position. So that looks really cool. Now what else I wanna do is slow this animation down. I feel like it's a bit too quick. So you can easily do that by going over here uh, to the card and do a transition like that. Set that equal to double curly brackets. And you can define a layout in here. Another pair of curly brackets, I know. And then you can change the duration of it in here. So I can do one second if I wanted to. All right, so let's see. Look at that. So that slows it down quite a bit. That's really cool. Okay, so what else I want to do is change the easing of this to make it look a bit cooler. So I'm going to choose type spring, which is going to make it look a bit faster. It's going to also add a little bounciness effect to it. Next up, I don't want to stretch the card out this much because it's quite quite a bit, right? It's too long. So for that, all you need to do is literally shorten the width of the content. So I can do I can do it on this inner dev, right? The expanded content. This you can short. You can either add a class name to this. Okay, so there we go. So I just added a class name for this, just in case we have additional stuff in here, like a button. Let's say submit or read more. Actually, that already expands it, but whatever. Hello. Okay, like that. Oh, that's an ugly button. So just added the class name to this and then in here I'm just gonna grab it and add a width to it. Let's see, want it to be around 30 rem or so. All right, so there we go. Now it's nice and animating. Maybe a bit longer, 35. There we can make it a bit longer rather than taller. All right, cool. Now one thing you might experience is if you try to add a border radius to this, and say something like 2 rem, Right, so it looks good, but when you click on it, it does this weird bounce effect, see? It might be hard to tell because it's quite fast, but when you click off of it, it quickly changes its size and it just looks weird and off. So I found a fix to it finally, uh, been looking all over the internet. One thing is don't add it to the class in here, do it on the actual element here, add a style tag to it, like that and do a border radius here. Uh, so I can do one rem, okay, hit save. So let's take a look now. As you can see, it behaves a bit nicer rather than doing a weird jumping effect. And so from what I've noticed, it, this issue occurs with border radius and also box shadow. So those things, those two things you should keep in mind. So let's do that here as well. Box shadow, and let's just add a simple one. Do zero pixels, 10 pixels, and 30 pixels RGBA. I'll do zero, 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 which is black. And we'll do 0 0.5 for the opacity. I like that, that's pretty cool. All right, and that's pretty much it. Now one more thing that you might wanna do is maybe animate this text in. Um, so for that, what you need to do is go to the motion diff here, right? And what you can do is add a initial. So by default, when the component starts loading up, you want it to be opacity zero and then to animate in with opacity one, all right? Simple as that and hit save. So now when it opens up, it does a little fade in. It might be hard to tell because it does it quite fast. So you can also define a transition here and just say, set this equal to, and you can do duration here of one second. Let's take a look. So there we go, look at that. You have a nice little fade in as well. Uh, you can up, you can animate it out as well. I wanna keep it like this because it's quite responsive and fast. But if you also wanna fade it out before this gets closed up, you can do that with animate presence. So you just need to import that basically and then wrap the content around with animate presence. 
And once you do animate presence around the content, you'll gain access to something called exit here. So you can also define that. And basically you just tell it here, what do you want it to do when the component gets unmounted, which is opacity zero, I want it to fade out. Now, for some reason, it's quite buggy. I don't know why layout stops working with that for some reason, haven't really figured it out. Uh, so I just like to keep it simple. I tried it with uh, adding the layout on this, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. But I do think it actually looks better without the fade out like that. Okay, there we go. And that's our little expandable card. Hope you enjoyed this little episode. Thank you so much for watching. And I do wanna have a bit more fun with this frame or motion because it's quite a few cool stuff that you can do with it. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode. Check out the courses on developed by ed.com and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.